Greetings all frog here. Let's play GeoGuessr. We have been challenged by Wade. The return of the Civil War challenge is here. There are actually three more parts to this challenge. And I this one's called Extremes. And I don't know if they're all Extremes, part one, two, and three, or what. But this particular one, at least, is called Extremes. And it will have factoids as per usual. This is Selineville Road, Northeast. This looks to be in Ohio. Because this looks like the southern border. If I was going to outline Ohio, that's what I would do. So we appear to be in the southern part of Ohio. On Selineville Road, northeast. I don't know where Selineville, Ohio is. So I don't even know where this road would be going. Aside from saying Selineville. Loose gravel. Yeah, Ohio does this weird thing. I don't know if they do this in other states or not. But they will rip the top of the road off when they go to resurface it. And they will literally just, they have a machine that just chews up the top part of the road and it leaves it all um, roughed up. Then sometimes they'll just leave it like that or they'll come back with a new bed of gravel that they will put on top of the road and then you just have to drive along it. And then finally, they'll come back and put the layer of asphalt on top of it. It's a very strange thing. It actually doesn't take very long, but sometimes the process seems artificially drawn out. And I don't know why. And I've never seen this anywhere else but in Ohio. Granted, I haven't lived anywhere but Michigan and Ohio. And when I travel places, there's not a lot of stuff going on. Morgan something? Are you going to tell me what road we're on other than Severe or Salineville Road? No. I don't know where Morgan County is. We're on the Ohio 39 East, apparently. There's fresh tar. This is what I'm talking about. So this is the next step of the, the whole process. All right, so we're in the south, one would presume. Where is 39? I don't know. I don't see Selineville. There's 93 because of course there is. All right, I'm gonna go to the bigger map. It's 37. I need 39. That's West Virginia. Okay, so this is Ohio. I don't know how far into this I wanna get, but I guess we're gonna have to get farther in. Boy, there's a lot of roads in Ohio. Uh, that'd be an interesting survey. Most densely roaded states. There's 39. There's Selineville. By golly. So it is just outside of Liverpool and Chester. Okay. We can get this. Just outside of Liverpool and Chester. Nope, I lost it. Oh, gosh darn it. All right. Back to the mat. It's very frustrating. What the hell happened to 39? There it is. It's up at the top. Oh, I see. It's right where Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and Ohio all meet. Okay. It's outside of Steubenville? North of Steubenville. There we go. There's Selineville. All right. So here's the road. I don't know where on the road, but that's close enough. It's a little closer. It's on the other side of Selineville. <laughs> you live and lean learn, right? Uh, so, let's see. Do read only after part one. Colonel John Hunt Morgan conducted several cavalry raids throughout Kentucky during 1862. Promoted to Brigadier, Brigadier General, he launched his most daring raid of all in June of 1863. He crossed the Ohio River, disobeying his orders, and attacked towns through southern Indiana and Ohio. Concurrent with the Vicksburg-Gettysburg campaigns, he hoped to draw Union troops away from these critical battles. 
His force of 2,460 raced through Kentucky, diverting west of Louisville to cross into Indiana south of Corydon. Skirting north of Cincinnati, they continued east into Ohio and ran clear across the strait, pillaging as they went. His troops were dwindling with every skirmish, though, and when they attempted to cross back into West Virginia at Bluffington Island, they were repelled by a Union force backed by gunboats. A couple hundred escaped into West Virginia, but the majority were captured. The remnants headed north, passing Zanesville and Steubenville, until pursuit caught up with them and they were defeated here at the Battle of Selineville. This is regarded as the northernmost land battle in the American Civil War. Really? Oh, yeah. Gettysburg is a lot farther south than you think compared to that. For some reason, I was... I mean, I knew it's like the southern part of Pennsylvania, but... Well, cool. All right, that's so that's one extreme. We appear to be in Ohio again. This is the Ohio historical marker. Isn't this Columbus? This is Columbus. Spring Street and what? I mean, if that's the AEP building, that's the nationwide building. This is Spring. Okay. It's West and Marconi. Do, 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 do. Columbus, Ohio, Spring Street. There's the Arena District. There's Spring. There's West and Marconi. And then a, a historical thing. The Columbus Blue Jackets Winter Park, also McPherson Commons Park. Alright. What's up about this one? After the battle, the Raiders were forced to surrender near West Point, Ohio in July. Morgan and his officers were imprisoned here at the Ohio Penitentiary. Oh. Many of the enlisted men wound up somewhere else, as you'll find out later on. The old penitentiary occupied the ground between Neal Avenue and West Street, where you started, and was demolished in 1998. Huh. They didn't spend long here, though. In November of the same year, Morgan and six officers managed to escape by tunneling from their cell into an air shaft in the prison yard. They scaled the walls with a rope made from bed sheets and walked to the railroad station. Boarding a train to Cincinnati, they jumped out before arriving, hired a boat to cross the Ohio, and made their way back to the Confederacy. Only two were recaptured. Morgan returned to the military in his raiding efforts, but found the going more difficult as the war turned. He was killed in action the following year. Crazy. I mean, I go down to the arena district all the time. Between Neil... There's Neil. So it's probably in this wide open space. Or it was torn down to make the Neil Avenue garage. That would explain the Columbus Union Station Arch. So I actually just drove by this yesterday. I was like, what the hell is this? Why do we have a giant arch here? There you go. All right, town of St. Albans. Well, that's a great clue, isn't it? At the Vermont 36, which is far north, more northern than uh, where we just were. So I'll be very intrigued to know what this is all about. Moving along the 89, because that is, of course, the other clue we have going. St. Albans Town. We're on Main Street. St. Albans Bay. There is no Main Street in St. Albans Bay. But there is in St. Albans City. Which way we're going... Yeah, right here. Nice. Morgan's raid continued to have ripple effects. Bennett Young was captured after Selineville but escaped to Canada. He came up with a plan to raid across the border, attacking towns that steal money and force the Union to divert troops to their defense. Made a lieutenant and given official sanction, he recruited other Confederates in the North and prepared to plunder St. Albans on October 19, 1864. They stayed at hotels in town, amassing a strength of 21 men before making their move. Simultaneous robberies of the town's three banks, including the one you began by, were accompanied by holding the townspeople in the square. Hmm. They stole over $200,000, is that today's money or then money? Because then money, that's a lot of money. Uh, before trying unsuccessfully to torch the place and escape back over the border. The Canadians arrested them and recovered $88,000, while the Union demanded their extradition. The courts found them to be soldiers rather than criminals and released them, but returned the recovered cash. How polite. 
It was very obvious, though, that they did not want to be sucked into the conflict and were unwilling to be used as a base of operations, so no further raids were attempted. Although technically military, historians classify Young and his men as part of the Confederate Secret Service. And since there was no shootout between uniformed soldiers, Selineville retains its status. This is the northernmost military action. Oh, you little, uh, little sneak devil there. Elie de Pesamont Menu. This is not on the United States proper. There's a restaurant here, a very old building. Looks like an old train depot. And it lets me know there's a restaurant over there. Thank you so much. Montfort? Huh. Okay. Interesting. Are we in France proper or are we on one of the islands? Cherbourg. Oh, we're in Cherbourg. Cite de la Mer. Huh. I think we're in France. Who is... Uh, okay. I cannot answer that call right now. That's not ideal. It's my wife, but she must have gotten out of work early. She thought she was going to get out by by 4.30. It's 4.50. It's 4... Actually, 4.04 as I record this. She got out a lot early. Nice. We're definitely in Cherbourg. In France. Okay. France. Where is Cherbourg? It's on the coat. Wait, wait, where was the water? North of us? Okay. Ish. There's Cabourg. That could be an English transliteration. I think we might be on Jersey or Guernsey. No, oh, I'm pretty sure it said France. There's a French flag flying over there. My luck, it would actually be a Belgian flag, and I'll just not have noticed that. I'm okay with that. Yeah, that guess was awful. It was not horribly awful. Oh, I could have seen it. I wasn't looking at the light gray, though. Hmm. Design flaw. Le Cite de la Mer. Which is something. The northernmost battle of any type took place in the waters near here. The Confederate, Confederate Navy Commerce Raider Alabama, captained by R. Semis, put it into port at Sherburg on June 11, 1864 for repairs. They had begun around the Azores, raiding in the East Atlantic before crossing to New England, sailing south to the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, Brazil, and back over to Africa. They stopped for resupply in Cape Town before moving on to the East Indies, then back west and north to France. Over the course of two years, they had captured 65 ships valued at nearly $6 million. That's $6 million, 1860s dollars. They actually specified on that one. Making them one of the most successful commerce raiders ever. The ship was a sloop of war with two center-mounted pivot cannons and six smaller broadside guns powered by sail, as well as three, two, 300 uh, steam engines, horsepower steam engines. They were pursued by the similarly armed USS Kears Kearsarge, which caught up to them a few days later. The same ship had participated in the blockade of the CSS Sumter, Sem's previous command, which had to be abandoned at Gibraltar. Unwilling to let a similar state befall the Alabama, he prepared to embark and challenge Kearsarge before reinforcements could arrive. They sailed out past French territorial waters, escorted by the armored frigate Coron, and commenced their duel. The battle was observed by many spectators on shore and at sea, including an MP in his yacht, Deerhound. The ships circled and fired at each other for an hour. Alabama had a greater rate of fire, but her armament was slightly weaker and had been subject to deterioration over her long voyage. Kearsarge fired more slowly, but was more accurate. Plus, they had a makeshift armor belt protecting some sections of the hull. At the end, Alabama's hull was punctured below the waterline, and she struck her colors and sank. 
Her surviving crew were rescued by the surrounding ships, although Captain Semis and some others made it aboard the Deerhound and escaped back to England. Interesting. This appears to be the American West. Pay your fee over there. I want to pay my fee. I'm going to go back to the entrance of the park on Piaccio Peak Road. $7 to get into the park. Here at Piaccio Peak. Frontage Road, US 10. California, then. Well, no, Southern, right? Anywhere Southern. Wherever Piaccio Peak is. We're between Tucson and Phoenix, so I would imagine then we're in Arizona. At Piaccio Peak. There's Piaccio. There's Piaccio Peak State Park. Boom. So what happened out in Arizona? Here, in April 1862, occurred the westernmost battle skirmish. Really. In the ACW, most of the federal troops in the southwest had left to join the major armies in the east, so a small detachment of Texas cavalry headed west to take advantage of that. Arizona was still a territory at the time, but they set up shop in Tucson and they declared it a confederate territory. Once the situation in California stabilized with the Union still in control, they sent a force east to remedy this. Scouts from both groups made contact in the past near here. They traded fire for a while, resulting in a handful of casualties on both sides, before the Union troopers pulled back to the main column. Knowing they were outnumbered, the Confederate detachment withdrew from Tucson and went back to Texas. So that, my friends, is the Extremes Challenge Part 1. And I don't know if that's Part 1 of the Extremes or just Part 1 of the remaining Part 3 challenges, but there are at least another two challenges to go in this American Civil Wars challenge that has been curated so thoughtfully by Wade. So thank you so much for sending that one in. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you'd like to do your own challenge, of course, you can go over to geocenter.ml and put in your five locations. We'll give you a link that you send to me over a private message on YouTube, and I will add you to the schedule. Thanks again, Wade, for sending this one in. It was very enjoyable. If you liked it, click the like button. If you could do have of that. Hello. <laughs> Please subscribe to the channel to stay updated to everything as it happens, even if I can't speak. And until next time, cheers. Thank <laughs> you.